Hey there, welcome to First Glance with Jody Vance. Always love to touch base with an old friend, and that's how I feel about our next guest, Ken Dontremont. You recognize him if you watch us regularly. We're going to talk Medexis Pharmaceuticals. Ken, always good to see you. Hi, Jody. It's great to see you too. You always bring us great information. And also, I have to say, whenever we talk, I feel like we're doing something good because we're putting yes. out. Uh, a mission to help people and that's not a pie in the sky rainbows and unicorn statement because you're actually doing that at Medexis so give the Coles notes on what Medexis Pharmaceuticals does for somebody who perhaps hasn't seen you here before. Sure yeah Medexis Pharmaceuticals is a it's a pharmaceutical company uh, we really focus on the commercial aspects of uh, drugs for rare disease uh, orphan uh, drugs uh, in North America U.S. and Canada. So when you say orphan drugs, or you say uh, those things that might not be available in Canada in this moment, but you start by saying we're a pharmaceutical company, sometimes people say, oh, big pharma. No, right? And yeah, no, totally get it. You're, yeah. you're doing something that's that's leading edge. Um, well, I totally so understand that. I, I, I grew, grew up in big pharma, and, and my vision was I wanted to get closer to the patient and try and help people and recognize the impact of what we do, and that's Medexis. I mean, that's why we're focused on rare disease, orphan drugs, you know, diseases where, you know, these patients need just as much help as, as those who are in big therapeutic areas like cardiovascular medicine. You know, somebody with cancer or rare disease uh, needs a lot of support. Uh, and so we're trying to bring those drugs uh, that perhaps big pharma companies uh, wouldn't look at. We're trying to bring those drugs to patients in U.S. and Canada and, you know, to help, help them live better lives is simply what we're trying to do. It's so great. M. DP, M is in Mary, D is in David, P is in Peter, MDP is Medexis Pharmaceuticals on the TSX Exchange. Uh, Ken Dontremont uh, is the, the leading edge of this company, which we can get into, again, the people behind the scenes and the whys and the hows in your history. But I want to be specific to the therapeutic areas, rheumatology, autoimmune disease, specialty oncology, allergies, pediatric diseases. These are those areas that maybe aren't as big and sexy as and profitable, um, as you say, to some pharmaceutical companies where these drugs might be available in other jurisdictions elsewhere around the world have been approved, but somehow have not made it to North America in that way. What are we looking at most recently? We last talked just last or just January. Yeah, just last month. So what's new? You've got some Q3 highlights for us? We do. We had record revenue, uh, 28.7 million of revenue. That's all time record for Medexis. Uh, these are U.S. dollars, by the way. So uh, I don't know what that translates to in Canadian, uh, but it's a lot more. Uh, and then, you know, 5.2 of uh, positive EBITDA. So we're making money off of that revenue. And, you know, I think we're particularly proud since we last spoke, uh, we got a drug called Kufposa uh, listed on the Quebec formulary. And this is for people with uh, cerebral palsy who have really severe drooling, uh, which, you know, for us, you know, it's not going to be a huge drug, but it certainly gives us a gratification that we've done something good for that group of patients that desperately needs help. And just that alone gives me, it, it tugs at the heartstrings, right? Because having known somebody, knowing someone well, who is brilliant, and and engaged and and wonderful who suffers cere cerebral palsy uh issues including drooling and if you would ask him he would tell you that is what embarrasses him most about his lot in life and everything else he can take and can you know move forward in a meaningful way but it's that if he could just stop that one thing given all of the challenges. The rest of us walk around thinking we have issues and problems and struggles. And then yeah. you speak to somebody that all they really want is to stop that one thing and there you are making it happen. Yeah, and that's a perfect example that, you know, a person like that, you know, they just want to go out and be able to socialize like a normal person would do. And yeah. that drooling prevents it. And, you know, the payers had taken the attitude that, oh, it's a cosmetic thing. Well, it's not a cosmetic thing if it stops people from, uh, you know, living, living lives. And so, yeah. 
you know, we're really happy that Quebec uh, and the provincial formulary in Quebec finally recognize that, hey, no, this is more than cosmetic. And it should be reimbursed for those people to give them access to that drug. So at least in that province now, people with cerebral palsy have access. Hopefully they can use the drug. It works for them and they can better enjoy their lives and their, their social activities. And maybe there's a domino effect to that and more provinces follow suit. Maybe it it it, it pushes forward the need uh, or the uh, amplifies the need elsewhere. Let's put it that way and, and show how simply it's so crazy for Jim and Joan public to look around and say, that's approved in that province, but not in that province when it's clearly helping somebody over here. And so you're, you know, fighting the good fight to, to yeah, not only and, get that equity, but bring the drugs in that have been approved elsewhere. I think that's a really important piece of this puzzle, Ken. And we're certainly going to keep pushing because, yeah, we see it exactly like that, Jody, that, you know, now that Quebec has said yes, that gives us some support to go to other provinces and say, hey, you know, maybe you should take a slightly different view of this and we'll yeah. get some of the patients to help us. And, you know, hopefully, you know, at the end of the day, it'll be covered right across the country like it should be. I mean, this is an important drug for those people. And yeah. you know, this is never going to be a big drug because fortunately yeah. cerebral palsy is not very common. And so this is not going to break the bank. But it will help those people, you know, dealing with that condition to just live a normal life or a more normal life. More normal life, the most normal life that they possibly can. Medexis Pharmaceuticals, again, MDP on the TSX Exchange. We're with Ken Dontremont. Tell us about you a little bit. I, I love hearing your story, your background and your whys. Uh, yeah, well, I, I just grew up in big pharma and really wanted to make a difference. And starting Medexis, what was that difference? Could focus on certain drugs that I knew that, you know, were needed in this uh, country and started in Canada. Uh, and then we expanded to the U.S. And, you know, now we've got a $100 million company. Uh, we hope to get a lot bigger uh, by bringing more uh, interesting drugs uh, to this territory and, you know, helping people with some some of those conditions. I mean, uh, we. What was your first? What was your first drug? What was the first one that you're um, like, yeah? Do you remember? Yeah, the first drug was something called Prosorba Colum. It was for very severe rheumatoid arthritis, and it was a total flop. So, <laughs> thank goodness we dusted ourselves off. Uh, we picked up, we kept going, and then we found our first successful drug was something called the Metoject for rheumatoid arthritis also. Uh, just an injectable form of an old, old drug uh, that made it easier for people to get their medication while in the community. You know, instead right. of having to go to the physician's office to get an injection, they could do it at home. So that, that was really what started it. And from there, we, we built up the, this portfolio. And okay, so... Doesn't it say so much about Ken Dontremont for you watching or listening right now that he would have said the truth of his story was the first one was a total flop and then he dusted himself off <laughs> and then found another drug that worked for the same issue. I just think you constantly bring what we hope more people in the pharmaceutical lane would bring, which is an ethical bend to helping people while also being very financially focused obviously you're in it to win it in terms of a company like you said a hundred million dollar company that you'd like to grow uh you know day over day and 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 certainly give return to your investors um how do people get in touch with you and learn more about you if they've got questions or comments yeah everything is available at medexis.com so you'll find our website there all the investor information is there all of our contact information and you know, feel free to reach out if you have questions is there any one uh, pharmaceutical, one drug that's coming down the pipe that you see? Because oftentimes you'll tell me about one that's not quite there, but you're kind of targeting right now. It's like, what are you working on? Yeah, we've got something called triosulfan. It's for uh, uh, certain types of leukemia. It's a conditioning agent prior to stem cell transplant. Uh, a stem cell transplant can cure leukemia, certain types of leukemia, if it's successful. Uh, and right. this drug just kind of opens up that uh, therapy to more people. And so we're really anxious to get that approved in the U.S. We did get it approved in Canada. So, you know, key hospitals in Canada are now using it. And we're okay. trying to do the same thing in the U.S. So uh, 
Stay tuned. Always a pleasure to chat with you, my friend. Thanks, Ken. We'll talk soon. It's great to see you, Jody. Thank you.